Hi there, folks, and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Today is the day we announce the winners of the people that participated in the comments down below on whether I was going to be working on... Uh, can you see this here? Cameraman, move this over to whether I was going to be working on the 1982 35 horsepower Johnson, the 20 horse Mercury, or the 18 horse Evinrude, or the Big Secret, which is a 9.9 .9 Johnson, which is actually a 15 horse Johnson with a 9.9 .9 cover on it, or the 120 horse Merc Cruiser, where all the votes came in. We had, I'm going to tell you how many we had. I got it right here on this electronic device that tells me things. Um, we had a total of, where is it? Boom, bear with me. 159 total comments on this slide, on the video that involved whether, what was the thing. Anyway, 200 thumbs up. I was going for 2,000 so you could win a free hat, but it was 200. So long ways away, no hat for that. That just rhymed. Didn't mean to. Sorry about that. My notebook. Be right back. So what we had, I took and you can take the video and dump it into this comment downloader and it'll download all the comments and put it in your spreadsheet for you. I like spreadsheets. Don't tell everybody. And uh, we had the votes, number of votes. I'll just break it down for you right here. The 99 got 19 comments that said big secret or 99 right second place was the mercury 20 horse had 17 that was pretty close and then the 35 horse had 11 the 120 had six and the 18 horse had five so that's the order i'm going to do it in 99 is coming up first but the other thing i had and i'm not wait, making anybody wait till the end of the video please watch the whole video and i'll tell you who the winners are i'm not going to do that to you guys i'm going to tell you in the beginning if you choose to watch the rest of the video it's very much appreciated because the longer you watch it the better it is for me and my channel and don't forget to like and subscribe hit that thumbs up hit the notification bell so anytime i drop a video youtube goes hey guys RMD's got another one. Check out the Backyard Marina. He's got another video. Might be entertaining. Might not be. Some of you on the last video even left a comment. I'm, I'll talk about that in a minute. So, the person that won, because I told whoever got the most votes of the outboards or the inboards, and I'd select, randomly select by, uh, there's a number selector thing you can do that's gives you a number, a range number, and you pick it, and it'll point to a person that wins. The person that won is V, V is in Victor, N is in Nancy, C is in Charles, just VNC. That's who's going to win a free hat that I'll ship to you. Please go back to the video, look at my uh, email address there, and send me an email with your contact information so I can get your hat mailed out to you. Now, I will tell you, I went to the embroidery place to get the hats made. And they say the hats I want may not be in stock, but I'm gonna check back in this week to see how they're doing on getting me the hats that I want because I want a specific hat and I wanna have this specific thing put on the hat for the, for the winner. So please send me an email. I'll reach back out to you. I'll keep you up to date as to the progress on the hat. Now, the second thing that we're going to give away, there's only two things since we didn't hit the 2,000 likes on this video. We're going to the workhorse. We're going to weigh the workhorse right here. I have not weighed it. And there was a total of 28 guesses on the workhorse for weight, ranging from as low as 68 pounds to as high as 220 pounds. So, and I actually took a picture of my screen with all the guesses. So when we weigh it out here, I'm going to tell you what the guess was, who guessed it, and I'll announce their name as well. Please, there again, go back to this video. You can go back, you can go back into this video, the description at the bottom of this video. You can look and find my email address to email me your contact information so I can send you your hat. Anyway, let's get, oops, did I just say anyway? That's two. This is a drinking game. 
Every time I say the A word, anyway, there's three. Take a drink. Because somebody made a comment in my last video, because I, I realized when I was editing it, I was saying that word a lot. I'm going to try to keep it in check. So if your buddies want to have a drinking game, go to my previous video, watch that video, and anytime I say that word, I wouldn't take a full drink. I'd take sips of the least amount of alcoholic beer you can drink because I still think at the end of that video, you will end up with alcohol poisoning if you drink every time I say that word. Fair warning. Have fun with it. Uh, let's get this thing on my two-wheeler here and get it over here under the scale so I can pick it up. And I'll show you guys what I'm going to do. Oh, mercy. Ah! Woo! Ah! Easy, easy, easy. Hit, sit, sit! Ah. i tell you what. You pick that up. Better make sure you got a tight O-ring. That's all I got to say about that. So I got my old deer weighing scale, and it'll go up to 550 pounds, so it should be enough to do the job. I gotta, I gotta see if you guys are in frame oh, here. Yeah. We'll get you centered up. Oh, heck yeah, there you go. I gotta set this old outdrive down. We're gonna lean it up against something, maybe. Easy. There you go. Let go. There we go. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, because I have no reason to lie to you. I have not picked this thing up yet, so I have no idea myself what it weighs. Okay, let's just make sure that the, the old scale tears to zero here. There we go. That's on the zero mark right there. There we go. No influences on the zero. Okay. Let's go. Easy. Oh, mercy. Oh, mercy. Easy. Saddle, 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 saddle. Well, I'll be. That's in five increments, so that's 150. 157. That's 157 on the money. 157 pounds. No wonder that hurts when you try to pick it up. 157. All right, back to back to me on the camera. Hang on. 157. 157. So I took a picture of my screen, screenshot where I had all this stuff. I would have printed it out, but your boy here ran out of uh, black ink. So it wasn't going to happen. Ooh. Okay, so it's whoever was the closest, right? Well, I'll be dipped. Okay. So, 157, we had a 151, and we had a 165. We had three, actually, 165s, but 165 minus 157 uh, is 8. Right? Right. 157 from 151 is 6. So 151 is the winner. It says here the rare Wisconsin motor will weigh 151 pounds, it says. And this is 151. Ralph Barker. So Ralph Barker, get a hold of me. Get on to my email in the description. Send me your information so I can make sure I get you a hat. Wow, that was interesting because we had two people at 150, 
three people at 165 and one at 151 and one at one of the 165 so badger bob you guys heard me mention in the last video donated that 18 horse stuff for me so he was he was this close that close so anyway oop, did it again uh ralph barker and vnc get on the emails and send me a message and give me your information and i'll make sure i get you your hat out to you as soon as i receive them so onward and upward so this turned into the johnson 99 with the big secret the saga continues and the reason I say the soccer continues is because I'm going to run you through what I've been through on this motor and what experiences I've had with it so far and what started as point, sorry, what started out as the big secret part one in part two uh, kind of got things going with this channel a little good, a little bit good, which was awesome. Uh, between the two videos of this particular outboard motor has received I'm pretty sure it's over a half a million views total on those two videos so I'm not expecting this video to go hey you can sit right here and lean it right against this I'm not expecting this video to go to get that many views but it might it might there's a lot of people out there that have 15 horse 19 uh Golly gee, I'm trying to remember the year. Pretty sure it's an 87. Pretty sure it's an 87. Anyway, let's... Did it again. It's just force of habit. I speak in front of people sometimes, and I got I, I use this video thing and watch myself back as a coaching thing, right? So I'm going to jump over here. We're going to take a look at a couple of things, and then we're going to start diving into the pieces I'm going to put on new, get this power head back in, and see if we can make this thing run like it's supposed to. And then I have a feeling since it is a long shaft, it's going to end up on the back of my big blue boat out there as a kicker motor uh, for trolling, for second source of power in case the main engine goes uh, and go from there. So spin you around and show you what I got. There's the power head. And actually the power head is really clean. Everything inside here is really clean. I'm not going to pull the head off of this thing because it does have excellent compression. There is no problems there whatsoever. So I'm gonna leave that be. I'm gonna put, I've got the carburetor here and all the new parts. And we'll, so we'll dive into the carburetor. I've got, let's just, let's just back up and take a look at what I got here. So here's my box of goodies. Here's my, I've got another carburetor off of something here. We're gonna just slip slide this kind of, well, that looks like, that's a fuel pump stuff there. We'll just kind of, yeah, I don't know. Eek. There's some serious. All right. I'll pull the other stuff over here. Let me clean this off. All righty. So this is a new gasket. It's a round rubbery thing everything in this box i bought for this what the heck i just buy an empty box oh that might have had my boom i'm guessing that had my top plate a new top plate in it um another rubbery gasket type of apparatus another empty box i'm buying a lot of empty boxes let's see some of the stuff I actually already took a gander at. And I've had this apart for a while. Here's the brand new bowl. And I ain't kidding you. These two pieces together. I'm trying to remember what the price was. Pack and slip. Pack and slip have any? Nope. Nope. Anyway. I'm, there I did it again. Take a drink. Uh, these two pieces ended up being, I think it was over $150 for these two, which is absolutely 
absolutely nuts for plastic pieces. Uh, this is the old one, actually, huh? This is the brandy new one. And what else do I have here? I'm dropping my stuff. Golly. That's why I can't have nice things. Needle valve. Needle valve. Well, I didn't drop those. These are some, I'm guessing, some little gasket stuff. Little tiny stuff. What's that say? Leaf valve. So these are my reed valves. I got new reed valves. Leaf valve. MarineEngine.com. People are always asking me, where do you buy your stuff from to get your parts? Well, this stuff came from MarineEngine.com. And they're actually, they're actually pretty good about getting your parts. There's another piece that's, uh, what, uh, what in tarnation? This gasket here, there's a carburetor gasket. That goes to the top plate. One more piece, that's it. couple of uh, parts for uh, 3d printed so that's all the pieces there so the reed valve so those people had guessed that this had a bad reed valve that's why it died on the water because uh, I'd put this thing together it was running like I thought was really good what I thought was really good and then we we're out got the banana on the water brrr, and it fell on its face it just died I couldn't get it to start again I noticed fuel in the bottom pan coming out real bad realize that the this bowl was cracked and then it wouldn't run and then I realized this top plate was warped so that wasn't a, that was a bigger problem too so just everything went to just went to crap in a hurry on me here's the uh, carburetor as it were so we're gonna get all this carburetor I think what I'll do is I'll get this carburetor reassembled and then I'll get my reed plate. I can remember where the heck I put it. Good Lord, I've had it apart just too long, folks. Anyway, we'll get the reed plate put back on here and uh, get this, this buttoned up. And uh, we'll be ready to put it back, power head back in there and get this thing back into one piece and then dunk it in my tank and get it running. That'll be the, that'll be the game plan here. Well, you know you've had it apart too long. Too, too long. Trying to find my reed plate. It's also I use my carburetor mounting surface. I can't find it. I spent the past 15 minutes just looking around here, off camera obviously, to see if I could locate it. So I'm going to have to follow one of my rules that I picked up from another YouTuber that I followed. It says if you can't find something, you lost something, you just got to start cleaning. So I'm going to start cleaning, systematically cleaning up my shop so I can find it so I can continue this dog hunt video. Man alive, I can't believe. I'm not sure why it's not right here. Why isn't it here? I don't know. Carburetor's still there. All the other stuff. There's a container that has all my hardware and it's with that. And it's on one of my shelves, so I'll, I'll find it. I'll be back. Well, that took all of 30 seconds. I found it. I went over and found one of my stainless bread trays, or whatever you call these trays, where I'd put all the stuff in, the exhaust pipe, and all my other gaskets to put it back together. I start looking through this and realize, man, you take a lot of stuff apart. But anyway, I found it, so mystery solved there. I'm going to park this around on the back side over here. And uh, I got all my pieces now. All right. I'm happy. Mystery solved. Let's get to putting this back together. I'm going to go ahead and replace the reeds because I do have my reed plate and my gaskets here. And this one here, I, the only reason I'm replacing the reeds, and I probably don't need to, is this one there's one reed reed that's here that just stays open a little bit that's it and it's just my guess is you could flip this thing over and it would be just fine but it also it's 1987 been running however many miles or hours and 
just seems like a good time to go ahead and just put brand new ones in. So we'll start off with that. We'll put that back on. Once that's on, then it's just the intake boop back on and we just start bolting pieces back on. Easy peasy, right? Let's jump in. Alrighty, I want to get you in here and show you the reason I'm replacing this bowl on this carburetor. I got it under my magnifier fire here. I'm gonna see if I can see if you can see what I'm seeing. It's hard to detect if you're just looking at the outside. It doesn't show up very easily, but if you look at the inside, it's really easy to see. There's a crack that runs right across here. Right down there and runs right on down the bowl. Clear down. Trying to get you in there. Clear down about three quarters of the way down. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm not sure how well it's going to come out. I can hardly see it on my camera. But anyway, that's why this bowl is being replaced. And that car bowl, uh, what was it? Or $45.99 for a new plastic carburetor bowl, float bowl. And then, obviously, this piece here warped. And since that piece warped, you can't unwarp him, unwarp them. But yeah, it's a, uh, it's not good. But that piece, I bought a brand new one of those. That piece alone is 147 off MarineEngine.com. So it gets rather expensive real quick on these. Now what I do understand is on the early carburetors, they didn't have the plastic top and bottom in 1988. I think this, I'm pretty sure that I decided this was an 88. The, what they had was a metal bowl and a metal top plate. And then the late production went to these plastic pieces of crap, which I'm not happy about that, but it is what it is. And this is what I have. Now, I think if you, I'm not sure about this, but I think you could take an early carburetor and put and replace a late carburetor. And I believe it's all the same. It would all work. But we're going to go ahead. I've already got the... You know the float in here everything there works just fine and dandy and we're gonna put the new bowl on now and you're gonna see this bowl kind of kind of sits up a little bit but that's because this here and that little gasket down in there compress and hold things in place that's by design good bad or otherwise that's what it is so we'll go ahead and get these screws put in here and all these little screws do have little washers on them. You want to make sure you don't lose your washers. Just for the simple reason. It helps take some of that stress off that plastic when you're tightening it down. I was just noticing the new bowl has a threaded hole here that goes into nothing. There must be something that possibly hangs off of them in the future. This bowl here, it's just blank. Just doing, noticing a little comparison difference there. And these, because of the crack on the other one, I'm going to, there again, be very gentle on tightening these down. I'm not sure, if, I don't think tightening it cracked it last time. I honestly believe that uh, the bowl cracked because just, you know, plastic, once plastic is made, you got a bad screw here, it's not full depth clearance there. I'm going to have to run to the hardware store and get me some new screws for the top side of this thing. But you want to just just squeeze that gasket. But well, once was, what I was saying is once plastic is made, created, rubber, or anything like that, from the day one it starts to age, just like car tires or anything else. Car tires sit in your garage for 10 years, and they're junk, even if you didn't use them, because they'll just... Rubber just ages. That's why you'll find a lot of these uh, tire places, they won't touch a tire that's 10 years old or older. They won't even inflate it for you. They'll just say, nope, we're not. Legally, we can't touch it, or maybe their insurance or whatnot, but it's just, it's a safety thing. So here I am getting all these, just kind of, just give them a gentle snug. I mean, that's like click. Doing the old wrist torque here. And that bowl's back together. Now we can put the top piece back on. That's the one thing I am short some screws on. 
And as we can see here, this is the gasket, the old gasket that was on it. Where'd it go? Oh, I had it here. Oh, where the heck did it go? Just kind of looking things over, just seeing what's what. Now this I'm just temporarily putting on with some screws I've got here. Uh, somehow, quite a few of my screws went missing. So what I want to do here is put this together just to kind of hold it in place and just see how things are going to fit. Which it looks like it's all going together pretty good. I'm not even really tightening these down tight at all. And I got to get some washers. I'm not sure where all the screws went. I've had this thing apart too long. And I'm sure they're in a pan somewhere in my shop here. And I'll find it and I'll have spares, guaranteed. But yeah, I'm just seeing how things look on here. Now I've, had, I've got to take this off of this particular top plate and put it on this one. And it would appear that it's just held on there with an O-ring. So we'll see if I can sneak underneath this O-ring and pop it out without wrecking it. There she goes. That should just slide right off of there. Slide right back onto this one. This is also where you have this little linkage that rides between these two. Now sometimes I think you got to put this on before you put the top on. Maybe this will slide on without doing that. I'm going to see right now. Oh yeah, I just that's your throttle that runs up against your opens her up. I'll just snap that little o-ring back on there. Trapped for life. That's pretty much it for the carburetor put back together. There's not a lot going on there. This should, uh, once I get all my screws in there, I believe the two screws that I don't have that are longer that go in here, go right there. They're on these top bosses here. So, we want to make sure we put that back on. And also this says, you know, before torquing the screws, you want to make sure this is jammed up tight. Because uh, that being jammed up tight there seals around there a little bit. That's got a, there's a gasket there. That's kind of, that's used as a gasket. There you go. So anyway, I'm going to have to run to the hardware store. We're going to get some new screws and uh, new washers, stainless. Because some reason I only have three and I need one, two, three, four, five. I'll probably find out that I only needed the three, but I know I need I got two here that goes in through the top. I do have those, so that's not a so problem. So now we'll set the carburetor aside until I get my screws. Oh, the other thing I do have, let's go ahead and put that in. I got the needle valve here. I thought, well, as long as I'm putting in a new new top plate, I should go ahead and put my new valve in. It'd be kind of silly not to. Now I put the rubber gasket in here. And this should pick up the thread here. Just gently turning it. I don't want it to bind or do anything weird. And I'm just using its own knob to put it in. It fits rather snug, which is nice because you don't want it wiggling around under vibration. And what I'll do with this is I'll gently bottom it out and I'll back it off one and a half turns and that'll be where I start. Then I can play with the mixer from there when it's running. Right there it stopped. I'll go ahead and put this one in a position I can see it at, see it, and I'm going to go half, one, one and a half. And I'll just leave it like that. But the yeah, carburetors are very simple on these things. Very simple. Alright. In this needle, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I'm just putting in a new one because I have it. And I'll just stick that aside. And we'll be using that later on. Something else with a damaged needle, possibly. Now, as I think I might have showed you before, 
see if I can get it here. On these leaf valves, this one here was not sitting tight up against the, the aluminum here. It's lifted up just a little bit. So I decided to go ahead and, and replace the leaf valve. So I purchased brand new ones. There's one. What's in here? Oh, there's a there's a little tiny o-ring. I gotta figure out where that goes because I ordered that for some reason. Here's the other one. I'll look at my exploded diagrams here before too long. There's the second one. Pretty straightforward how to replace these. It's not rocket science. It's just outboard motor science. Make sure you use good quality screwdrivers when you're taking your stuff apart and putting it together so your screwdrivers don't slip out and round and create a bunch of burrs on your threads. Now these are restrictor plates. These keep the reeds from opening it up too far. Now people have, I have heard people talk about putting boysen reeds on these things. Now, another interesting thing on the 15 horse versus the 9.9, see this little spacer plate? I'm trying to remember, I'm going off the top of my head, but I think that's about 12,000 stick. And what that does when that's there, just lets this thing open up just a touch more. I mean, we're talking just a touch more, but it's necessarily necessary to have. So our surfaces look pretty good and clean. I just threw one of my screws on the floor. That's why I can't have nice things. There we go. So we'll just lay the new plate right there in its place. Put the restrictor plate right back on it. It's clean. Nothing, nothing to worry about there. With the spacer. And the screws. Now if you want to learn a whole bunch of stuff about these little 9.9s and the 15 horses and the years that they had. The different configurations. Different exhaust pipes different carbs, different things when they were a 9.9 to a 15. Uh, check out Leroy's Ramblings. That's I'll leave a link in the description down below. It's a good read. If his name is Leroy, so I'm assuming it's Leroy since it's Leroy's Ramblings. Um, put a lot of information in there about these older outboards it's just it's worth a read and it's interesting on some of the stuff that they did throughout the years and the reasons they did them so there we got that one in and tight lays down beautifully like brand new because it is brand new let's go ahead and do the same thing for this one here again still got the same spacer Quite honestly, I think you could take these and flip them over. And I think, I think it'd be just fine. Wouldn't hurt a thing. But you know, when I put this one back together, uh, I want it to be just better than right. So if you guys see anything I'm doing wrong while you're watching me do these videos, and why I'm painstakingly not going into uh, time lapse for you, just leave a comment down below. I read, I read just just about 99.9% .9 of all the comments. I don't necessarily answer all comments. Sometimes this gets to be a little bit cumbersome to try to answer everything everybody has to you know say. A lot of times I'll, I definitely will say thanks for watching, most generally. But don't be afraid to leave me a comment. So that's the brand new, that lays down nice and flat on there now, but not really, huh. That's interesting, wonder what's causing that to lift up a little bit. 
Here again, I thought it might have been a plate, but we're going to check the flatness of this joker. This is not playing nice. Could this plate be warped? Could there be a little bit of something there? Because when it's laying there, it's perfectly flat. I wonder if there's just a little something going on back here. I just got my little gasket scraper. I'm just going to see if there's anything. Now, it wouldn't take much debris right here. When you tighten that down for it, just to pick that up a little bit. I'm just making sure there's no burrs or any kind of raised surface on any of these components that cause that little bit of a bind to happen. Well, that seems to be really clean, not any buildup. Let me lay that back on there again. I'm going to take the air hose and kind of blast that off. That lays perfectly flat there. I, even, I was just now pushing down on it a little bit, just right where it's going to tighten down just to see if it's going to do anything, but that's, that's tight. Okay. Sorry if my hand's in the way. Sometimes it's just got to be that way. You get in there. Little Dickens, come on. There we go. Must have been. I'm just going to watch it when I tighten it up this time to see if anything. See, now she's tight. She's down tight against it. There must have been just the slightest bit of debris there. Yep. Tight as a frog's butthole, that's for sure. There we go. Okay. That's ready to rock and roll. And I do have... New gasket for this guy. So that's ready to go back. We'll set that over here. Now I'm going to take you over to my bench and show you a few things. Now here I am thinking I've got everything I need to put this back together because I'd bought a couple of gaskets, you know, bought a float bowl, a couple other things, and then I started kind of looking things over a little bit, going, man, I have left myself just a touch short on some items. For instance, some people, and this, this is an inherent problem with this particular, uh, these motors, these outboards, this rubber that holds these copper pipes in place here, you can see they'll start, they said they'll start to get hot, they could melt and start plugging off some of your water passage stuff. And they ain't wrong, but this one's not plugged. So this one's never overheated or anything, but as you can see, the gasket here, this gasket is part of, I think this thing goes right about, nope, nope, maybe, nope, maybe not, I don't know, nope, I have no idea. Oh well, that's not the gasket maybe. <laughs> but this is, this, I got to get these new rubber pieces here, I want to replace those while I've got it apart. As you can see, this exhaust pipe is the round exhaust pipe versus the uh, square. And this is what they did on some of the years uh, 
the tuned, they call this, I think they call it the tuned exhaust pipe. I could be wrong there. It's been a while since I read Leroy's Ramblings of Stuff. Just to, just to see what you got, what I got here. I wanted to read some things to you. And there again, I say I'll leave the link in the description below. Um, you know, there should be a model number riveted on the aluminum ID plate. On the left hand transom, let's see here, I'm kind of read the difference of the car. Okay. The model and year are stamped on, on a soft plug also, but probably only up to 1979 in a code we can relate to. And when I talk about that, this right here, right there, there's a plug with a stamp number in it right on there. So if your little plate's gone off your, off your, off your transom mount, there's some numbers you can utilize here, according to this, up to 1979. I'm not so sure about after that. It's interesting to also note that the 15 horsepower uses the same block as the 99, just a different carburetor. I don't know how many times I've said that and people go, nope, nope, that's not it, but it is in specific years, in specific years. Um, the, let's see, you, so you can see the 15 horsepower with the same 10R78M numbers here as, a, as the 99 has. Uh, that's on the, I'm guessing, on some of the stamping. And I've heard from more than one person that their plug numbers had, did, did not match any of the codes. So this kind of backs up the idea of a change after the 1979 date as the factory changed things as time went on. However, another reader said the plug codes were good at 1988. So take with that what you will. Uh, in the 1981, the marine industry went from a powerhead rating to a prop rating. The word was that the imported Japanese engines of the same rating were outperforming the U.S. engines as they were rated differently. To get equivalent prop horsepower on a U.S. motor prior to 1981, take the horsepower rating and then subtract about 10%. This will get you closer to the newer rating. Make sense? So I'm going to read a little more here that's important that I want you guys to hear it here. Um, you can fast forward if you want. But this is some valuable information. There again, go to Leroy's Ramblings and you can find this. It says, when they designed this series, this series of motors, they designed it as a 15 horsepower and then detuned it with a different carburetor for the 99. When the 99 and the 15 horn ca horsepower came into being in 1974 up through 1978, the only real difference between these two motors was the carburetor. In 1979, they added a shim for each cylinder behind the leaf valve. I just showed you that shim. And under the stop plate for the 15 horsepower, apparently to allow leaf valves to open up more at a higher RPM, giving the motor more fuel air mixture. The owner's manual indicates that the operating range for the 99 is 4,500 to 5,500 RPM, where the 15 horse is 5,500 to 6,500 RPM. So where the 15 horsepower gets its power over the 99 is that the carburetor allows more Fuel air to increase the RPM by a thousand, which equals extra power. It is my experience, however, that the 15 horsepower does not idle down as low or as smooth as the 99. It should not really make that much difference as at, as at an idle. They use, they use a different idle jet than the main jet. Except that the 15 horse has a larger throat size and apparently needs slightly more fuel, even at an idle even at an idle trolling speed. So if you intend to troll trout at a slow speed, stay with the 99 carburetor. However, if you want it for a backup motor and motor and salmon trawler, which usually requires slightly higher troll speed, then consider the 15 horse. The change to the aftermarket Boyce and Reeve valves may help in this situation. However, in this situation, however, uh, let's see. That's the other interesting part of this too, is the outside visual dimensions of both carburetors appear the same unless you look inside the throat. If you look from the in, look in from the rear, you will have to position the throttle plate to a horizontal position to be able to see the throat very well. The 99 carburetor's internal throat is 5 8 diameter, 0 0.625. 15 horsepower internal throat diameter is 7 8 0.875 up until late 1987 when they went to a plastic top carburetor. Yep, that's what I've got. Um, note, this is not measured from the left-hand photo below. There's a photo. 
Um, the outlet of the rear throat diameter is the same on both to match the manifold port diameter. The idle jet venturi system is also slightly different between the two. So that, that answers the questions there. And they'll also go into more detail on what years did what. And I've got a whole bunch of literature here I was printing out. There's a picture of the plate he was talking about. There's pictures of the square exhaust pipe versus the round one, which is here. Um, let's see. Let's just read this here. This you will note that there are there were, were three different ongoing 15 horsepower modifications. The 15 horsepower from 1974 to early 1977 with just the different metal topped carburetor. The added leaf shim in the in 1979 and the added tuned exhaust system 1981, which also included the two previous modifications. The 1970 part parts manual list. A shim, and it gives you the part number here to go between the leaf and the stop plate. The shim sells for $2.94 each. Now, I don't know how old this information is. Um, it was carried up until, until 1992. Now, the cool part is, if you your reed valve plate, if you want to make it to a 15 horse, all you got to do is have that shim to put behind your current existing 9.9 .9 reeds. The valve openings are not any bigger. The reed valve openings uh, are not any bigger. So you can do that. Uh, it was carried up to 1992 for the 15 horse, which apparently allowed the 15 horse to breathe a little better. The leaf valves are the same for all motors they are used on. There you go. How much simpler does it get than that? Anyway, I printed off a couple of this stuff to read to you guys because I found it was very informative, very helpful. Here's a, here's a diagram showing the difference in carburetor. This light blue would be like the, now this is obviously way bigger than the carburetor picture wise. But you see the difference between this light blue and the dark blue line here? That's the difference between the 9.9 and the 15 horse carburetor. Pretty straightforward stuff. Anyway, I just had to share that with you guys. Now, another important thing to do when you're messing around with these doggone motors. As you can see here, I have from MarineEngine.com. Now, these guys need to sponsor me, but they don't. This is all me wanting to let you guys know that how to obtain your parts and get your old outboards running, right? And you can go on there and you'll see these diagrams that show the exploded view of a carburetor. Um, here's, a, here's another exploded view of the same carburetor. I did more than one, but also did the, you know, the reed valve assembly. And that's when I realized I have this gasket, but I do not have that gasket. So that's a stinker. So what I'll do here, what I like to do when I run across this stuff is like, okay, I need number 11. I'll circle that one as I'm going through my parts and seeing what I have or don't have. So I know I need that. Then I start looking at some of this other stuff here. Uh, right now I can see that that number 55 and 55 is the same part number for that grommet that I just showed you on the top of the exhaust. So I'll circle both of those. So I know I need two of those. And this, that way I can go through the rest of my parts and go, what am I missing? What do I not have? And when you're paying shipping, typically most of the stuff for the outboard things, it's like eight bucks shipping. At least it was the last time I ordered. It's probably more now because the world's gone crazy. Uh, but I can order, you know, a bunch of parts one time and pay one shipping charge because they're already expensive enough as it is. Now I did, I did think I had the wrong gasket for the bottom plate and I did not. The nice thing about leaving the old gasket on there and scraping it off when you're ready to put it together is I can lay this one up here and fully see that this gasket is the right gasket for this particular application. Trying to, I was just kind of, it's been a while since I had this apart, but you can see a water line here and there's some water line stuff here. So you can get an idea where this goes on. So this has a line up. Whoops, this doesn't go that way. There you go. It uh, doesn't line up that way either. What the hell? Oh, there we go. Huh. This has got to be smarter than the parts I'm working on. Yeah, that sits down here. Uses Utilizes these holes. And obviously these holes here help hold the motor down to the frame when it's put together. So I do have the right stuff, which is great, except for these gaskets here I need to order. Well, unfortunately, I would like to be a little further along in this build before I end this video. Problem being, I need these parts before I can start putting things back together and setting it back down where it belongs and getting this bad boy running like it should be. So I'm not quitting yet on this. I told you that the 9.9 the with a big secret was the engine I was going to start with. 
and let you guys have a drawing for the hat. Um, here's the hat. I'm not going to show you the front of it. Uh, maybe next video you'll see the front of it. By that time, the uh, folks that won the hats will have contacted me and I will have shipped their hats. And uh, I'm not making these hats available. Uh, they're, I don't know. By the time I made it worthwhile to get these hats in, it only took about two and a half weeks. I don't know how long supplies would last. Uh, but you guys tell me if you'd be interested in a hat, I may go ahead and have some more made. But I have to do the math on it. Let's see here. Because these cost me, divided by, buy, yeah, carry the one, zero, zero, carry the five, carry the six. Nope. Two decimal places divided by pi. I hate to say this, but I would actually have to make, to make this worthwhile, I'd have to sell these for about, Right now, at current prices, $35 a piece plus shipping. And I'm not sure anybody's willing to pay that much for a doggone hat. Now, if you are, and if I get enough interest from everybody out there that says, yes, I want a hat, I want a hat, I want a hat, I will order some more hats, tell you when they're available, and then you can purchase them. Uh, I'm not like the other big wig guys that have a lot of uh, a lot of extra money to throw around on this stuff and uh, someday I will that would be great but when I do I'll make them even more affordable for everybody and uh, we'll go down that road but you could be one of the first ones and you could also tell me if you do want one let me know and if you want me to sign it underneath the the bill back here I'll sign it underneath there for you if you want that's up to you it's your hat your party all right enough about the dog on hat i'm going to go ahead and show you some other stuff on the mercury that i'm going to work on here and i've got some other information i discovered that's it's just i don't know it's frightening the cost of parts that's all they're at that's all i got to say about that um i got some more shirt notes here somewhere nope not that piece of paper oh here it is so that drive shaft on the let's take a look at that real quick. Ridiculously tight on this shot. So I wanted you guys to see this this shaft here. Whoa, my ink pen. It's leaking in the inside. I gotta throw that away. That can't end up in my shirt. If you look right here, you see this little notch in right there? Boom, boom. I mean, that spline is literally half of what it used to be. And uh, I don't know if the heat treat on that wasn't fantastic or what the heck was going on there why that wore that bad. Typically, I think in the crankshaft, it's heat treated. So actually, if you wanted anything to wear, you'd want it to be this part and not the crankshaft on your uh, power plant. But I priced that thing. $445.14. Are you kidding me? That's what the drive shaft cost on that 20 horse. So if you had to go and buy that, that's more than I paid for the outboard motor itself. So it's one of those things, if you can find a parts motor, you can definitely find a parts motor, most likely, for much less than $445.14. But if it's the exact same year, it might have the exact same problem. So what I found out with this one, now I lucked out, I think, we're going to find out here in just, just a minute, is the one that I have the wore out drive shaft in is a 1975. I looked it up by part number, and I'll leave the, in the description below a link to a place where you can go look up serial numbers for these 70s, ver, vintage, or 70s uh, outboard motors, and it'll tell you the serial number range and what horsepower and what, uh, or not, horsepower, serial number range, and what year that would fall into. That's what I used. I found the new one I bought, I call it new, because <laughs> the other one's a 75, this one's a 1979, and I looked at the parts in the 1979 as well, is also the exact same part number. So the gearbox for all of them should be pretty much the same, which that's a good thing, right? 
So let's pull this gearbox off real quick and see if I can actually uh, look at the spline and see if I got a good one because I may just actually put the whole gearbox down on there. Let's jump into that right now. Now the reason I picked this one up so inexpensively is somebody had dropped it is what he had said. It had been dropped and cracked some things. But and what I can see right here is this, this part here is cracked right here. This shift mechanism that's in here, this is broken. There's a broken piece here. Uh, but the, the cool part is the power head could be absolutely fine. But I tried to pull it, oh, pull it over and it won't rotate. It won't rotate. But the prop rotates. Um, and it's like it's stuck in gear or whatnot. The cool part is I'm going to go ahead and pull the bolts off of this. Pull this uh, gearbox off this one and we'll see what we have. Because this could still have a, a good uh, power module if that's what this one has. The carburetor could still be good on it. There could be a lot of good salvageable, part, salvageable parts on here. The spark plugs, just looking from the outside, aren't rusty or, any, or anything. They look pretty new. So let's get this gearbox taken apart. Now I'm trying to remember. I believe there's only three bolts to take this thing apart. There's a place where a cavitation plate would be. I shouldn't get say a cavitation plate. It'd be a more or less a, a counter rotational skeg here that's on bigger motors, not on this one. All right, it takes a whoa, it takes a quarter inch Allen in here or hex, if you will, to take this plate off. And that'll expose a bolt right here, a nut that's on a stud right here. And we gotta take that stud loose and another one up top here. I'll show you, get a little better shot of that for you here in a minute. The nut underneath here is a half inch. It takes a half inch socket, I should say. Now, if this has the same wore out, crapped out spline as the other one have, then I may just be continuing to look in this project to just have to wait for another day. That's why I'm going ahead and jumping in now. Okay, we got that nut loose. And underneath here, it takes a 9 16 I believe, wrench. Maybe it's 5 8 Nope, 9 16 Make sure you're in the shot here so you can see what I'm doing. There's a 9 16 right here. Let's back that off. And you can see a little bit of the spline shaft right here for your shifter shaft. There's one more. Now you can see it's starting to separate on its own there. That's why you saw me bump it with my hand. Don't grab a hammer and start beating on things. <laughs> Use that as a last resort. There we go. Now what I did there, instead of beating on it, I took, went, took my screwdriver, went on top of that stud and just kind of pushed down gently. As you see, it just slid right down. I will finish backing this nut off and it should slide the rest of the way out.
Now looking at this one, it also has wear, but I tell you what, it's half as much wear as on the other one. So I, I think that's a gain and a plus. And so I'll end up going, I'll end up using this shaft and possibly this whole gearbox. I'm going to take and examine the gearbox to make sure it works like it should. We'll test it to see how tight it is. As you can see, this one's had a little bit of a rough life. It's had its skeg knocked off here, which I've shown you guys how I fixed that in the past on one that I broke off. This one here doesn't have the piece, and if I wanted to make it look whole again, I can weld on another piece and grind it and make it look whole again. Um, this much missing really doesn't have an impact on performance, but you can see this prop here has uh, taken a few hits. It hasn't, somebody had this wasn't kind to it, but I, I shouldn't say that because you can go in rivers, logs, hit rocks, things happen when you're in a boat. That's all there is to it. And a lot of these 20 horse uh, power motors are on smaller boats and you're going in odd and unique places, let's say, for sure. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to call it a wrap for now. I did measure those drive shaft links from the where they mount up to the top of the drive shaft. They're both exactly 19 inches. They're both a six spline. Uh, everything should interchange. Uh, I thought it would. One has a groove around the top where the other one doesn't. Shouldn't be a problem. Should just interchange. Uh, there wasn't anything below that groove like you see on some of these Evan Rudes and Johnsons where they have an O-ring around them. Some I read some updates where sometimes they remove the O-ring. I don't know what they did. I'm not, Maybe you guys can comment down below as to what all that was all about and why they did such things. I'm going to go ahead and get inside and get some parts ordered so I can get this, make further headway on this particular Johnson 99 with a big secret, which is the 15 horse. It was a 15 horse from the factory. Somebody put a 99 cover on it. Um, let's just call it my <laughs> Johnson 99 with a big secret in the beginning was a little bit clickbaitish. I do apologize for that, but... I have learned a lot about this particular 15 horse and all of its little quirks, and especially with its plastic carburetor parts, as you've seen. We'll get more of this put together. Uh, I would hope by the next video, I'd be so close to putting it back together and getting it running. Uh, I'm going to play around with this while I'm waiting for parts. I'm going to do some videoing on the 20 horse Mercury, see if I can get that thing bolted back together. See if I can get between the two outboard motors, get one good one out of them. One's going to be a parts one, obviously. The frame's cracked on that one. Probably can be fixed, but I'm going to disassemble that thing completely, probably part it out. Or if it's got a great power head, because I can't get the power head to turn over right now. In the next video, we'll play around with that. See if it's just in the pull start mechanisms jacked up because it fell. It's got a pretty good dent on top. Maybe something's dented and rubbing. I don't know. We'll find out. Don't forget to like the video. If you like it, give me the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Uh, I get a generous, generous, generous amount of views of people that's not subscribed. Don't be afraid to subscribe. If you have to set up a YouTube account, it doesn't cost you a single dime to do so. You can set a YouTube account up and then you can, uh, then you can hit subscribe and help support channels like mine. It's much appreciated. I hope the winners enjoyed the hats. I hope you guys give me some more feedback on the hats as you see them in upcoming videos. And uh, give me more suggestions. Uh, like I said, I got... Out of this series here, I'm working on about five different things. I got the 35 horse Johnson I'll be playing with. Once I hit a stalled out portion on the Mercury's, I'll jump to the Johnson, put that head back on, see if the compression comes back. You guys have been waiting to see that. And I'm going to get, uh, plus that, I won't have to pull start that one. That's an electric start only. So that'll give me old shoulder, you know, a little bit of a break. Not that it needs it. Uh, what else we got? I think that's about it. We got the 120 horse. Obviously, I was going to do a, a deep dive into that. Mer cruiser, but uh, spring's around the corner here. The grass is starting to turn green around here. We're still dropping below freezing overnight, getting up into the 50s during the day. We're starting to get ready to get the, uh, like you saw a video or so ago, I fired up the old uh, 35 horse on the banana. I'll be dropping that in a couple of small lakes around here and see if I can get me some bass with some top water fishing action, which is my favorite type of fishing is the top water, watching the bass blow up. That is so cool. Anyway, you guys, in Enjoy life. Get out there and have some fun. If it ain't broke, fix it till it is. I'll see you on the next video. I'm Michael, and I'm out of here. Now I got to clean up and organize for the next shot. Good stuff. <laughs>